Okay, so this is the cast on sack that's our goal. And it's made specifically for the LT150 with a quick reduction, no tie, gather and reduced needles down so there's not all that bulk. And we attach a key ring for the weights. The weight hook on the pulley system works right away. Up, and by making it shorter up. here, like that is high, you don't have to have such a long cast on set because really it defeats the purpose. The longer it is, the less travel you have before you have to shift, take your cast on sack off, and use your finished knitting. So our cast on, our mini cast on sack for the LT150 is completed and dried. And I've taken one needle out and now I'm going to take out the next needle. So the objective of this in terms of rows of what you do is you have 10 rows and then your pico, and then 10 rows, and then hang, and then 25 rows from here to here, and then you reduce, it should be at 12 needles all the way around, and you take those 12 needles, as you will see, and you run through the stitches, you pull them together, and you take the the ring and put it on and wrap it around and make a little tie and you have your cast on sack. Well I've already put all of the yarn that I'm going to use for this mini sack on my little cones. Uh, the colors I chose were primarily those that nobody wanted a sock from. As I begin to thread through the yarn delivery system, I'm going to run those little pigtails that direct the yarn and control it. Go in the direction toward the little pigtail. If it's in counterclockwise, do that. If it's clockwise, do that. Now I'm going through the tension disc at the top of the yarn delivery system and I'm going to be adjusting my tension on that the drag to three and then I'll bring it down forward and once I finally start to use it I'll be putting it in the take up wire so now I'm adding my yarn in to start I'm going to set my tension or stitch length which is really what we're talking about here at six that's to do the hem. Later, I'll adjust that to eight to do the rest of the sack. Eight to six, and then crank 10 rows. Starting at the end with that yellow target needle. Be transferring that stitch over to the one to the left. So I'm going every other needle, transferring the stitch over, because this is going to be our Pico hem. Watch my fingers as I do this. I'm assisting the transfer by leaning the needles out so that I can get a good, good grasp on getting my tool, my bent seven tool, into the stitch cleanly without splitting it. I'm going all the way around, and of course it's making a row of knitting as I'm going. Now, a lot of people handle this issue of like how do you count your rows when you do a pico hem well I do 10 rows and then I do a pico hem and then I do 10 rows we're almost all the way around at this point and now I'm going to do another 10 rows
And as I noted, I do 10 rows, do the pico, but I don't count the pico. So then I do another 10 rows. And now I'm counting to make absolutely sure I have it just right because I do want the picots to be absolutely at the top. They're the one that produce the loops that we want to hang for our cast on sack. Now I'm reaching down to get the weighted pulley and uh, release it so that I can now hang the hem. And I'm going to pull the tails from both the cast on yarn, the yellow, and the orange working um, sock yarn, or cast on sock yarn, through to the back. And I know that that top stitch right there, that's the tail, so I'm not hanging it. So I go for the stitch right underneath it and stick that on. That's my first one, and I'm going for that row that's sandwiched in between one row of waste and then all, all the other waste. And I start right at that, again, at that yellow target needle and work my way around, picking it up. Now, that sickle tool that I'm using, that comes from a package of woodworking tools, I think, they're also made very similar to what dentists use, but I really think they're for woodworking. And they are all metal, and my uh, sweet husband puts shrink wrap around the metal handle so that it's actually much easier to hold on to. It's something anybody can do. These tools, I think you can get them for under $15 at Harbor Freight. And shrink wrap is not shrink wrap tubing is not that expensive. You get the adhesive kind; it's a little costlier, but it it makes a lot of difference because the shrink wrap stays attached to it. Works great for all those different tools that come in that kit. So as I'm working my way around over here, probably the most important part about doing the pico is just make sure you're picking this, the whole stitch up and not splitting any. It's, it hangs much nicer. One thing I didn't mention is that you do need to adjust your stitch length. You want it looser, not just for the hanging of the hem, but also for the rest of the sock. I want a nice loose body so that it will just conform to the soft weights if I'm using soft weights or easily go down if I'm using the pulley system. So now I'm down here to the very end and we're going to show you how to pull those tails back through again and then weave them in the needle so that you don't have any finishing work. I pull the tail back through. I wanted to comment that the reason I put it back in there in the first place on the other side is it keeps it out of the way. When you're doing a hem, it really helps. Now that I've got it back on this side, I want to do something with that, the tail part that's the project yarn. I want to weave that back in every other needle configuration and then back on itself going back the other way. That locks it in and it finishes it. You don't have to mess with it again. Anytime you can do finishing work on your machine, it's right there, it's faster, just do it, and it's one less thing to have to do when you have your project off the machine. Show this again from the head cam shot so that you can see that I'm actually using my sickle tool as I do this uh, weaving in of the tail of the project yarn. So there I'm weaving it in. Now, as to do the back, going back the other way, 
you can try to use your finger, maybe if you have long nails, I don't. But if you use your tool, it makes it a whole lot simpler. Going immediately into grabbing the pulley weight and putting it back on because now we're going to do the body of the mini sack. As I get going, I'm going to switch yarn. And I'm going to go a little ways to get the yarn attached. And then I stop. I'm going to cut my first yarn. And now I've got tails I need to work in. And I'm going to do them much the same as what I did with the end of the hem. I'm going to show it again, and that's that I weave it in and out over three in and outs. <laughs> and then I'll come back in and take the other one and go in the needles that I didn't go in the first time. That's how I do that. You knit that in and you've done your finish work. You might want to do a little slip knot or work it back in again or just go ahead and cut your yarn and let it work its way in. It isn't a sock. It's not something that's going to have a lot of force put on it, generally speaking, even though you can put soft weights in it. 72 needle cylinder has six sections. To get down to 12 needles, I need to end up with two needles per section. There are 12 needles in each section, so if I divide by two, that tells me my magic number, which is a starting reduction of one stitch in six. So I begin my reduction by removing one needle in six. I begin my transfers at the yellow needle marker, the fr that first target needle. And then I count five stitches over, and then the next one is the sixth one. And I take, that would be the next one that would be transferred out. And so then I count another five stitches over, and then I pull up the sixth one. I do this as far around as I can go, and it gets me started, and I have my sequence point on, I just repeat what I'm doing over and over until I have the same result all the way around the cylinder. Take out a stitch, move it over to the left, remove the needle, move over five stitches to the sixth one that I already have raised a little bit, transfer that stitch, take the needle out, and move over five stitches to the next sixth needle that's already raised and so on and so on. That keeps my, not just my speed, because I'm really not trying to go fast, I'm just trying to have a rhythm to it. So that the things that stand out that come along any problem, I see it, I, I'm not overthinking it, and I'm not stressed. I know what the next step is. So as we're going around, once we get all of the transfers of taking out one stitch out of every six, I'm going to knit three rows all the way around and it goes really easily on the LT, especially in the circular cylinder motion. I've noticed that all the way from working with the oldest antique Tuttle, um, that when you work in cylinder rotation, you don't get that kind of like bump or that sense you have to push harder because you've got two stitches on the same needle. It's amazing how much difference a rotating cylinder can make sometimes. Okay, so now our effort is what's the next thing to do? Well, we've got, we have groups of five stitches. So whatever I do in the first of those five is what I'm going to do all the way around. And what I'm going to do is take out the center needle. So I move over two, two stitches, take out that third one, and take the needle out all the way around. This part's pretty simple. And it, as you work with a circular sock machine over time and you start doing these kinds of reductions, it just 
it, it's a real blessing to understand this is a simple thing. You don't have to overthink it mathematically. Just figure out what your first reduction is and then work with the ones that you have left in those little groups. Like in a group of five, which one do you take out? Well, you take out the center one if you want it even. And you this repeats itself, whether you're uh, bringing down a hat to a nice round top or a, a baby cap, a purse, you know, whatever it is you're working on that you want to curve down to a nice reduced two, this is the way to go. All right, so now we're going to, again, crank three rows in between. Now we've got this grouping of two and two. So now what do we do? We don't really have a center stitch to go for. Well, we'll just go for the first one, the other side of the yellow mark. Again, I'm using the yellow target needle as a guide. And I'm going to go one more round to get it over there. And we'll take that first, and I'm going to transfer that stitch over and take that needle out. And again, do the same thing here. Take that stitch out and then transfer it over. This is the progression of getting down to 24 needles, which then means you're only going to have to take out 12 more. You've got, you're almost all the way there. So as you go around, don't worry if you miscounted at some point. It's not that critical, especially on a, on a, you know, a cast on sack, it's just, it doesn't matter. This is a learning lesson of skills you're going to learn, uh, fit in lots of places when you're doing circular sock machines. Okay, we are now at the point where we're going to reduce our 24 stitches left down to just 12, our goal. And it's a bit of a stretch to pull that out, so be prepared. You'll have to pull that stitch over, but it goes over pretty easily, really. As you do this, you're going to have a, a real sense of accomplishment. You can see what you've done. So take, take a breath if you need to. So as we bring this down to just our 12 needles, I'm going to refresh it, uh, give, bring in the idea the next thing we're going to do is we're going to leave about a 14, 18 inch tail and we're going to get a needle and or a latch to, tool of some kind so that we can pick up those stitches off the needles and run this tail through it gathering each stitch on the tail. So watch as I do this part. So now I've got the tail all down inside in the center and with my left hand I'm going to control the tension instead of letting the yarn uh, control mechanism do that. Let it knit off a couple of stitches really loosely till it's set up and now I'm going to take it out and there's now one stitch in each one of those. So there's 12 and I'm going to take my latch tool and work with the stitch that I have available to me, which is one right in front of the yarn feed. And I'm going to bring that tail through it. And I just do that all the way around as, it, as those stitches present themselves to me. I'm just going to pick them up and pull it around. The hardest part of this is just keeping the yarn from getting tangled in uh, a needle somewhere. And you kind of get the hang of where to put your yarn to do something like this so that you can get it done without too much trouble. And pull it through. I think sometimes the last few stitches can sometimes be a little bit more <laughs> problematic.
problematic and I think it's because of the weight of the project you're working on will pull it down and it gives you some resistance that you weren't getting before. So now I'm almost to the very last and there, there's the last one. Oh, they, there it is. And it's off the machine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed my ring through those 12 stitches. And then I'm going to wrap and wrap and wrap around the remaining of the tail around that as I'm kind of locking it in. And then the next thing I do to finish it off is to pull those tails down into the hem where they'll just sort of disappear. And I'll trim that back after I get that other one in there, trim it off. And there it is. Now I'm going to use a 3 or a 3.25 millimeter steel uh, metal, usually, knitting needle, double pointed knitting needle. And I'm going to pick up these stitches that are in between the picots. There's one on back and one on front. And I revert and I alternate it one in front, one in back one in front, one in back. I do that so that in case one breaks, you still have a back one you can choose from and the other two on the either side won't break through. It makes your cast on sacks last a whole lot longer. I want to say that it probably works best if you use sock yarn or it can be a sock yarn that has a bit of cotton in it. Those work really well cotton and wool. What really helps is if it has nylon. That's what's really going to help these loops last a long time. So you do the first half, which is going to be what? Well, if you're doing it on a 72 needle cylinder, you, and you're only wanting a loop for every other needle on your 72 needle cylinder, you're going to have 36 loops. 18 on the front and 18 on the back. Or you can just say half is... 18 and half is 18 and you wash it with the knitting needles in it or you steam it with the knitting needles in it. Again, make sure they're metal. You don't want wood or plastic and steam it. You really don't want to do that. So there it is. There's your mini cast on set print LT150. And I'm going to show you real quickly here just a bowl and a sink, a little squirt of Dawn and whoosh it around a bit, stick it in there in some really warm water, get it nice and wet, and rinse out all of the processing that went on it. It'll sometimes have dust, a little dye, whatever.